Yeah, it's interesting that whole range of <laughs> topics because I, I had always been interested in lots of different things in my life as well, um, including those questions that were asked about world peace, subatomic particles, dreams, and running businesses and, you know, how that whole world works. I'd been interested in all of those things. And um, I actually grew up in quite a, a reasonably conventional um, home in London, West London, kind of middle class. And um, I can remember leaving school and sort of getting my first jobs and earning my first money, you know, doing Saturday jobs and sort of working in offices and that's what my father had done throughout his life. And it actually became clear to me quite quickly that I didn't want to lead a conventional life. That um, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I didn't want to conform to what was being offered me by conventional society. There was something in me that just rebelled against that really strongly. And um, and then I guess I really tried an unconventional life. You know, I I I tried to sort my life out so that I was travelling as much as possible. So that um, and I began to look into alternative ways of understanding, you know, what was going on about all of these topics about dreams and. Um, world peace and subatomic particles, and, you know, just trying to find out everything about life that I could. You know, I was just curious, I was just interested, I wanted to understand. And I wanted to understand what, you know, what I was doing here. You know, what am I doing here? Is my purpose in being here to, to get the mortgage and the house and the car and the, the family and... and um, and I, so I began to live a really unconventional life and um, and yet that didn't really give me what I was looking for either. And um, I guess really I could say that my life was a, it was a search, you know, in, in a really broadest possible sense. It also included that sort of traditional spiritual search as well, but I, I was searching in lots of ways, you know, I was searching in um, in an intellectual way, wanting to understand what was going on and thinking that once I understood everything and I got a handle on everything, you know, then I would know what was going on and I'd be okay. I was also searching in, um, in intimate relationships as well and looking to find my sense of satisfaction in an intimate relationship as well, you know, exploring that way of living. and. Um, yeah, and I did lots of interesting things. I, I, I tried to make my life interesting and exciting and adventurous and had some great adventures. And, but it was interesting, no matter what I did, no matter how much I learned, no matter how amazing the relationship I was in, no matter how exciting and adventurous my life was, there was always this sense of just, there was just something missing. It was just like always just something missing and um, and I, I could never really put my finger on it. There was just always a sense of dissatisfaction. Just, you know, and of course there were times when everything was going really well, but those would never last. You know, I could never hold on to that perfect set of circumstances. Something would change or my mood would just change for no apparent reason. And, and so there was just this sense of, of just something and it seemed to be almost within reach. It was tantalizingly close but I couldn't seem to quite grasp it or quite understand what it was that I was missing. And so I tried to rearrange everything in, in my life. You know, I tried, to, um, I tried to find that sense of stability and security and satisfaction by um, finding a better relationship or having more adventures or 
um, reading more books. I read loads and loads of books you know, about all kinds of things. And, um, but I still just never got there. And um, then it was really interesting to stumble across the Balanced View training and to be given a suggestion that really blew my mind, just completely blew my mind. And it was um, in all the thousands of books that I'd read on all of these different topics, everything from dreams to subatomic particles to world peace to all kinds of different topics, never had I been given the suggestion of why don't you just relax and allow everything to be as it is? It's like, that's, the, that's an interesting idea. How, how do I do that? I, and um, do I need to read like lots of books to sort of so I know how to relax and allow everything to be as it is? Um, or maybe I need to um, I need to have more experiences. Maybe if I've had more adventures, then I'll be able to relax and allow everything to be as it is. And and then I in the balanced view training, I heard no no nothing nothing needs to change. You you don't need to change your thoughts or your emotions or your sensations. Just just relax for a short moment and allow everything to be as it is. Okay, well, all right, I'll, I'll try that. And I tried that and I just relaxed and just for a short moment I stopped describing everything. Just, just stopped, just for an instant. And there, and there it was, that was what I had been looking for. There was this sense of openness, there was this sense of peace, there was this sense of ease, there was this clear seeing and just understanding as to what was going on. And then immediately I was off thinking about something else, thinking about short moments, thinking about how this training related to the other book that I'd read and da 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 da, da and off. And then somebody in the training, one of the trainers said to me, why don't you repeat that short moment? Oh, that's a good idea. It was really good, the first one. I'll, I'll, okay, thanks, I'll, I'll try that too. And so I took another short moment. I just stopped describing everything. I just relaxed, just mind and body, just resting naturally. And there it was again. There was this openness. There was this peace. There was this sense of, of just being comfortable with myself. And um, it was amazing to discover that what I had been looking for the whole time was what was looking, was this bright intelligence that was the source, that was the essence, that was actually the thing that was illuminating all of my experience from within. It was this intelligence that was naturally present. And so through all of the books that I'd read, through all of my experiences, through all of my intimate relationships, through everything that I'd experienced, there had been this constant that I just hadn't noticed. This is what made me, me, was this capacity to know. All of the ideas I had about me, they, they were things that I'd learned and, and they kept changing all of the time. You know, thinking, all right, I'm this kind of person or I'm that kind of person or I like this or I don't like that or now I'm going to be this kind of person, sort of trying on these different, it's like trying on different sets of clothes. All right, I'm going to be I'm going to live in the mountains and be a mountain man. That's what I am. Or, oh, I'm going to put on, I'm going to put on my shirt and I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be a party dude now. That's who I am. Or, oh, I'm just putting on my shades and I'm just going to be the chill dude on the beach now. And just trying on these different sort of ways of being, but but always trying to be something. Like always trying to be something. And in this short moment of just stopping all of the descriptions. I saw that actually I didn't need to try to be anyone. I, I was already me. I was already completely wide open. My mind was already totally clear, like a clear sky. And all of the thoughts and the emotions, all of my experiences, all of my descriptions, they were just like this stream of experience. Um, you could just call it like a stream of data. And that they appeared spontaneously and self-released naturally, like, um, like a line drawn in water. You know, if you draw a line with a stick or with your finger in water, as you draw it, it's already disappearing. It self-releases naturally. 
And as I relaxed for these short moments, I saw that that was the case with every single one of my own experiences. Every single one without exception. And so I continue to take these short moments because the results were so immediate. The benefits of relaxation, of increasing ease, and of accessing this brilliant clarity, this sharpness of mind that wasn't clouded by trying to work everything out. I'd learned that I needed to work everything out to become clear. But actually, what was always clear was the basis of trying to work everything out. So a short moment was shifting the focus or the emphasis from all of the descriptions about everything to the intelligence that included all the descriptions. And um, it was amazing to see how this, this practice of short moments just... Um, the instruction I was given was to take short moments um, of recognizing open intelligence whenever I naturally remembered. And so that was really easy. I didn't need to give myself a hard time. And at the beginning, I would remember once or twice a day and then I'd forget. But then when I came to an open meeting or I listened to one of the free audios from the website, that, that reminded me. So I remembered again. And it was amazing for me to see when... Um, I found myself taking short moments in my dreams. Re really, well for me it was interesting, the first time I woke up and um, I remembered I had this really strange dream, like quite disturbing dream. Not very pleasant descriptions going on, like this mosquito. Not so pleasant, but also part of open intelligence. And, um, and I woke up from this dream and, and one of the things that I was immediately, I remembered from the dream was God, it was so difficult to take short moments in that circumstance. But amazing how this practice was so effortless. It was so easy. It was so um, uncontrived that it just did um, begin to seep into my dream world as well. Um, but however it is for you, that's completely fine. It's short moments whenever you naturally remember, whether you're waking, dreaming or sleeping. There's no need to... Um, try and force the short moments, you'll find that you will just take them more often naturally because they work. Um, and then with the support that's offered, it's like you remind yourself, you support yourself in that way. And so if you're finding that you're not recognizing short moments in your dreams, then that's completely fine. You just relax there because everything is seen to be nothing other than this beneficial flow of spontaneous power. And I see now that my dreams work on many, many different levels to help support the resolution or the outshining of different data streams, different ideas I had about things. So, for example, in my dreams, um, I have all kinds of incredible adventures, all kinds of amazing adventures and, you know, trekking across mountains. I was being chased by lions down a river the other night and... Just, oh, it just, it's, sometimes in my dreams I have um, just the solution to something that I'm working on. Like, it'll just, it'll be part of the dream, the solution. So the way that dreams work and the way that all data streams work to support this recognition of open intelligence, which is not an intellectual idea, but is the expression of our own capacity to be of benefit to all. That was quite amazing for me to discover and the way that that works is not intellectual. So I see that the way that the dreams support me is not necessarily a way that can be understood intellectually. But I do see more and more the brilliance of how everything supports me and empowers me to be a more powerful, a more kind, a more capable human being, regardless of what the descriptions might be. Um, so the secret really is just to continue on with the short moments, however it looks for you. And you may find that they come up in your dreams or you may not. But however it is, that's just the way it is. And you can relax right there. Um, and with the reference to subatomic particles and heaven and hell, what was being talked about there was... Um, 
is sometimes called a cosmology, which is basically just a way of understanding what our origin is or who we are. So uh, one of the conventional ways of understanding who we are is we're a bunch of subatomic particles and that's our fundamental nature and when we die we'll either go to heaven or hell or whatever the equivalent is in your particular culture. Um, but what I see for myself is that what is primary and what is fundamental and what is the basis of everything is this open intelligence that I identified just when I stopped thinking for an instant. So when you stop thinking for an instant there is this openness, there is this alertness. Then the next thought immediately, or almost immediately, pops into your mind stream. But that openness of intelligence doesn't go anywhere. That openness of intelligence, that alertness, that fundamental capacity to know is the basis of all experience, of all descriptions, whether you're waking, dreaming, sleeping, whether they're positive, negative or neutral. All ideas about anything at all, including the ideas about subatomic sub particles and heaven and hell, all these ideas we've learned, the basis and the source for all of them, and the only no way we know any of them, is through this fundamental capacity to know. So without acknowledging that, there's no way to make sense of any of these ideas, or any of this information, or any of our experience. It's like stumbling around in the dark, it's like my experience before I came to this training where I knew there was something missing. There was something I wasn't being told. And what I wasn't being told, or what I didn't recognize, was that there was a fundamental basis for all of my experience. And I just hadn't noticed. And that was why it was so tantalizingly close, because it was the basis of my experience. It was always on, it was always there. But I just hadn't noticed it. I hadn't been given a suggestion and a set of tools to continue to see that it was always the case short moments repeated many times. And by integrating this practice, what you'll find happens is that there is just more and more clarity, more and more ease, more and more understanding about everything we've learned, about every experience, every thought, emotional sensation. Without exception, everything is already included and subsumed within this vast expanse of open intelligence. That's your intelligence not something mysterious or esoteric or far away. So just keeping it simple, one short moment at a time, allowing the flow of data to be as it is, recognize that open intelligence is its basis and its source. This instinctive recognition is exactly what you've been looking for. Because it will illuminate and open up everything that you know and everything you think and everything you do. And it opens it up in a way that is of benefit to all.